When we look at the markets today, we see stocks up big. The S&P 500 up 1.32%. The NASDAQ 100 up 1.75%. Bonds also up 0.48%. Gold up 0.75%. All of the ETFs we look at every day up decently. Let's jump first into the S&P 500. Of course, we always jump into that weekly chart first. And boom, we see a gigantic up candle forming after lots of indecision on that prior candle. You remember us saying lots of indecision tending up. And of course, that's exactly what we got with a bang up on Monday. We see the derivative oscillator peaked out back on the 2nd. The week ending the 2nd of November has been losing momentum since then as really the market's been sliding sideways. And now we see the price percent oscillator moving up also. Now again, it has also blown through the weekly trend line. So pay attention, lots of warning bells. We see we're going into, now remember, Friday was the end of the last candle. This is just the first day of the latest candle, but it's pushing through the trend line that had been set with the two prior candles, derivative oscillator moving up, price percent oscillator edging up even at a greater angle. We go from that two day to the four hour, what do we see? We see lots of up movement in the morning, a bit of a pairing back in the afternoon. We look at the derivative oscillator, and it looks like it gained just a little bit at the end of the day, really sort of flat the last day and a half as far as the derivative oscillator goes. That price percent oscillator is still spiking up. Now remember, we don't have an up move in the S&P 500 because the weekly is still confirmed down. It can't change until the end of the week. Remember, you never give what candles are doing until the candle is drawn. And a candle can't be drawn until the candle closes. Weekly candle doesn't close until Friday. So we'll continue to watch. Don't get greedy. Remember, we trend follow and we have to have, we have, to have clear, confirmed trends in order to do that. So we're just watching and waiting and seeing as we see stocks really, really up on Monday. Okay, back to the weekly. We go to QQQ. What's that? The NASDAQ 100. Of course, the NASDAQ 100 going down uh, since that first strong week down back on the 12th of October and down until perhaps it bottomed out again. Week starts up strong on the NASDAQ 100 too. Derivative oscillator still negative. That price percent oscillator is heading up for the first time in all that time. Again, flat over the prior week, but big strong green up candle. First day of the latest five-day candle. Go to the two-day chart. What do we see? Again, strong up movement going into the first day of the latest two-day candle. Derivative oscillator heading up. Price percent oscillator spiking up. And what do we see on that four-hour chart? Lots of up movement in the morning, bit of a pullback in the afternoon. F uh, pretty much the DO's flat, price percent oscillator heading up. So again, strong up movement, waiting to see if there's going to be a change in the end on that weekly chart at the end of the week. So we might have some possibilities for up trading if all this doesn't break down over the course of the week, which it can on both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. We're leading, going from stocks now, leading into 20-year bonds up 0.48%. And of course, on that weekly chart, we had the weekly vertical crossover. Remember, that happened on Friday. Very weak. But we actually saw things boom up on Monday, 0.48%. And, of course, we have now broken that downtrend line on the weekly, which we remove, and we go from the weekly so far. We go from the weekly that's up to the two-day, and, of course, it is trying to go up in this latest move. First day of the latest two-day candle is up. We'll see if that sustained derivative oscillator losing momentum, that price percent oscillator spiking up. We look at the four-hour chart. What do we see down in the morning and booming up in the afternoon, pulling back a little, and a crossover going up on that four-hour chart, which is good to see. Did you watch for that? Did you look to jump in in the afternoon? You did have some down movement in the morning, which makes it difficult. What does that chart show us? Well, we can see that around the 10.30 hour or so, 
uh, things turned around and started moving up as far as the candles go and then crossed over in the afternoon. Don't know if those of you who like to jump in on a weekly vertical crossover, use that to jump in and ride it up over the course of the day. It's about the only time we look at that 30-minute chart. Want to know more about what we do? We encourage you to buy our book where we talk about weekly vertical crossovers and we talk about uh, the, the power of that, and we see that over and over again. First that we've had in a while, and we had it on bonds. Okay, we're going to go from bonds to our last chart. Always look at gold. Last gold up 0.75%. Now, as we keep an eye on gold, remember gold has been in a confirmed up movement since it crossed over going up. Weekly vertical crossover back on the 5th of October. I say it's been a confirmed up move, but it's not always been up. We are continuing to track it, and so far this week up 0.75%. Not That's quite nice. Derivative oscillator still losing upward momentum. Price percent oscillators now heading up. We go from that to the two-day chart. First day of the latest two-day. Looks like it might be crossing over again. We're not going to move our line or our arrow until this candle is fully drawn, and it may be fully drawn at the end of the day. Well, it will be fully drawn at the end of the day one way or the other. If it's a big down day for gold, probably won't end crossing, but we shall see, and we'll let you know. That sets us up for uptrades in gold after that crossing occurs. Let's look at the four-hour chart. Of course, it's still moving uh, greatly up in the morning, bit of a pullback in the afternoon, and that average pace is up. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator heading up. So we'll watch during the course of the week and see if we don't have a potential play on gold. Continue to keep your eye on 20-year bonds with the weekly vertical crossover going up. And of course, stocks up big, inversing or trying to at least inverse all that strong down movement over the last many weeks. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day. In the show notes, you'll find links. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, you want to buy our book, uh, please follow those links. We also have daily market worksheets, weekly market worksheets, and trade worksheet PDFs all for free. God bless, my friends. Be sure to subscribe to our daily market review at chartingwealth.com. We'll send this out to you every day with the show notes. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.